Hey, what's going on guys? For this weekend's MOOC review, we're taking a look at Hobby Japan's first ever, well, it's their volume one anyway, Girls Plamo style book, Zero One. So I guess that means that maybe this is going to be a new series from Hobby Japan, just covering all sorts of different Mech Musume model kits there. And when I say all sorts, I mean, basically all the different Japanese brand ones. It doesn't feature any of like the ATK girls, the Nuke Matrix kits. It also doesn't really feature much of Bandai's 30 Minute Sisters in there. I think we may see like a little bit of that in there at the very end, but it's mostly Kotobukiya, uh, Good Smile Company, Aoshima, those uh, girls uh, model kit lines are gonna be featured in here so let's get into it here for today's video all right a couple things to note right here on the front first of all we've got the msrp up there of 2200 yen so under 20 dollars, not too bad as you can see this is like a softbound one it doesn't have the hard side and this is going to be mm, just over 100 pages at about 114 pages in total so it's not like super big the price is all right i think this is going to have a lot of content inside of here as you'll see another cool thing to point out is that we've got water slide decals included so those are going to be huge here at the very back here on our credits page which features the same uh, photograph as what's on the cover also has the water slide decal sheet right there which looks like it has some different eye decals for some Megami device kits and also has some Megami device logos some Hobby Japan logos Kotobukiya logos girls Plamo style logos on there so if you wanted to make like a little plaque or something for your kit you could put some of those cool decals on there and then, like I said there's not gonna be a whole lot of Bendai stuff in here but we do have this whole back page here for the 30 minute sisters MOOC there that was a, a separate MOOC that also came with water side decal so just an advertisement for a different MOOC basically the 30 minute sisters ver version of this MOOC which features like I said again a whole lot of stuff in here mostly Kotobukiya stuff on the back an advertisement for the new Megalomaria series from Kotobukiya which uh, this first one actually just released so it should be getting that and reviewing that one for you guys very soon really looking forward to that one of the key points about that line as you can see featured here is just the super duper super articulation in there and also the compatibility with other Kotobukiya stuff like Sosai Shoujo Teian, Megami Device, etc. So a lot of really cool stuff to look forward to with that line. But let's go ahead and get into it here on the front. It also tells you like the different series of model kits that are going to be covered in here. But we'll see all that as we get into it. So we've got an opening letter page here, a table of contents over here showing you some of the feature builds. Some of them, there's going to be much more than that gonna be in here and it looks like there's the 30 minute sisters in there okay so we will see a little bit of that but yeah a little bit all right starting off with the cover megami device kits though here we've got the two uh, auv regalia kits the suzuno regalia and amaterasu regalia custom builds of those here from the megami device series both pretty awesome new kits there new is that they're fairly recent releases here and this one looks really cool really awesome photography here for this one as well with that like dark night sky background there Looks really cool. All the text, obviously, for this MOOC gonna be all in Japanese. But, oh, I should also credit the builders this one by Uruhana3, who you can follow on Twitter. Next page, a bunch of different photos here, full photos and different poses, detail images of some of the different details of this. Beautiful build on this one, really, really cool. Love that uh, text on the front of the like skirt parts too, it's really interesting. So that's really nice. I kind of wonder, looking at that closely, if that's a custom decal or just hand painted. It looks like it's probably a custom printed decal there for that. Oh yeah, here it is right here. <laughs> so it looks like maybe he uh, painted that on like kind of like a wax paper or something with like, a, I don't know, some kind of gel marker or something maybe. And then peel, you, I guess peeled it off, stuck it onto the kit as a mask basically, uh, and then painted it in that way. Really, really cool. Very interesting. So, all right. That's cool. And then over here, also some uh, very intense masking done on this uh, gold lining part right there. I would have just done a reverse mask if it was me. It would have been, I think, a lot easier. But you did that where you lay the tape over the whole thing and then like trace it out and cut it out really super carefully all along there. And then you've got your mask. It's pretty intense. And then we have the uh, final form there of the AUV. And it's kind of like transformed mode. And then the Amaterasu regalia here, sort of like the opposite. You have like kind of the light and the dark versions, right? This would be the light version in the two. Really cool, like uh, this white uh, circle part of the background. I guess that's like looking at this on the front and maybe in the other images, it wasn't really noticeable. I just figured it was just kind of like part of the background. Was, against a white background, that white circle there wasn't as obvious. But here, against this uh, sky background there, and Fujisan there, of course, you've got this uh, white circle, which looks really cool. It's kind of a very interesting detail uh, to have in there. And this kind of skirting part there, too, I would also imagine is just custom made. So there's kind of a little bit more about that. Oh, is it actually a mirror? That would be really, really cool. It is a mirror, isn't it? That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. 
That's a really, really creative uh, use of some material there. I love that. That's really interesting. So that looks cool there. And then, yeah, I assume we're probably going to see maybe some kind of work in progress photo. Yeah, there we go. About the skirt part as well, this kind of cloth part, which I guess it looks like it's just formed from uh, plot play there. Maybe just uh, heated and formed, possibly using some sort of uh, vacuum mold maybe for that. Vacuum mold, is that right? I'm not sure if that's the correct word for that. I'm kind of drawing a blank. Uh, I don't think that's right, but I'm not sure. And this is really cool too. It's sort of like a, a Gundam, crossbone Gundam kind of style, like the Peacock Smasher, right? That gun kind of has like the accordion launcher, sort of similar kind of look to that with these parts all kind of spread out there like that out of this big massive weapon that she's holding. That's really, really cool. Really awesome design work here for these. So Urahana san did a fantastic job on those wheels. That's really cool. All right, next up, another custom Megami device build here, Kaede Agatsuma. This one is modeled by Rika. Pretty cool image here to start us off where we can, I mean, like the kit looks awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing these next photos where we can see it a bit more clearly, but as just like a stylized image here with some added effect, that looks really cool. But here we can see the kit in a bit more, a bit more clearly anyway. I love the uh, painted effect for the hair, how it's in the kind of uh, somewhat uh, kind of metallic purple kind of color there, but looks really good uh, for the hair parts. Otherwise, I mean, just the painting on this also just in general, very nice, very clean, really cool little details on some of these parts here too. So nice to have these little detail images to kind of highlight this because we have these nice big full images, which are great, but having those detailed images too, just to kind of highlight some of the smaller, finer details of the build are awesome. So here's a little bit about uh, the custom made clothing. So it looks like maybe he uh, custom designed and 3D printed kind of basically the whole torso part to make this new body for that. That's not the original body of the kit there. So that's pretty awesome. And here's a look at kind of the original kit. And it looks like this is also just like a uh, fully painted and modeled version of the original or of that uh, different Megami device kit. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but anyway. Uh, the three of them there together look really cool. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's, oh man, I really want to do that now. <laughs> Make like a kind of vignette of the three of the kits that kind of go together in that way. That'd be really awesome. So definitely something to put on the to-do list. I love the look of that. All right, then the next up from Kodobukya is the Wisdom uh, line of Megami Device kits. Some of the first kits out in the Megami Device line were the uh, Wisdom series. We have a soldier was one of them. This one is the soldier, but uh, kind of customized to a medic and tank version. So this was the I think soldier and grappler was the original uh, kit, but now modified to medic and tank as these two are. So kind of very cool new aesthetic to apply to these kits, obviously with a lot of customization using some different parts there, using some really cool different uh, MSG parts and weapons parts and stuff, kit bashing to customize these. Those look really cool and love the paint scheme on them as well. And the added effect of these clear parts in here too and everything just, I mean, just fantastic creativity in this customization here for these. It's really, really cool to see. And this is why I love taking a look at these MOOCs just because you can really kind of take your time looking at stuff like this and uh, borrow some ideas, we could say. But I mean, there's a lot of really cool stuff in here and it just kind of goes to show, uh, I think, one of the things that you can definitely tell about, you know, how these kits are set up uh, from Kodobukiya, they're, they're made to be customized like this. It's great to have some work in progress photos in here. It would be nice to maybe have a little bit more, of course. I love seeing the work in progress photos. And there's a few here and there, uh, which are cool to see. Uh, but always good to see more if possible. But here we have the Buso Shinki Arnval. Uh, this one is the Trench 2. This is a repaint color version of the Arnval kit there. Also a Megami Device kit, kind of Megami Device Busoshinki crossover release there, obviously. Really cool kit, built the uh, original, the white version, and built and reviewed that one if you guys want to check out that. I do also have the Type Angel Arnval, which is the black version that I'm going to be building and reviewing for you guys here actually very soon. So look forward to that. But this painted version looks beautiful here with that black, black. I wonder what he used for that black, because, I mean, it's never straight up actual black but it's just a really really dark gray there but it looks really good with that bright red with the bright red accents on there it looks really nice really cool build here of that here we got some more detail images of the body 
You can see like the internal, the Buso Shinki, like chest parts right there, and some of the weapons, some of the detail parts, adding like these, uh, what well, looks like kind of metal detail parts and things around to some of the joints in different areas on that. So that looks cool. All right, interview time, interview section where just a big wall of text. Uh, I'm not sure who is being interviewed here. All the names are there in kanji I can't read. So, but anyway, I'm sure it's very interesting. Some of the model kit uh, designers here, I would imagine. So it looks like this is uh, themed on Megami device. So we've seen uh, just a number of different Megami device kits so far. Uh, this is a interview about Megami device series here. An interview or a conversation, I guess you could say, because it's uh, between the four guys there. So moving on here, it looks like we're going to have some more Megami device action with some really interesting custom builds highlighted. I've actually seen a number of these builds uh, around online. This one I think I've seen in another MOOC before, as I recall. Um, this one I know I've seen online is a really cool build there. Uh, that's from Wild River. That's why I've seen that before. That one there from Wild River uh, with the whole cloth aspect there on that. That one's really cool. So some very interesting custom builds here. I love this one with the uh, <laughs> color pencils and like, uh, what is that? Like a memo pad backpack kind of thing on there. Very interesting. And this sort of V sniper here, as it's called, I guess, over there, that black one. A lot of really cool, interesting builds. Here are some more. How, how big is this section? It's gonna be here, these next couple pages. So there's some, some more photos of that build that we saw at the start and a couple of other very interesting custom builds here. That looks really cool. So all right, that one is um, that uh, build from Naoki. We've seen that one before as well in a different MOOC. I don't remember exactly which one, but I know we've seen it before in another MOOC. But some really cool builds there. All right, the Gorai Kai with Exosuit EX. This one's from Blondie, Blondie51. So. Blondie, friend of the channel. If you guys remember from our Mechamusume custom contest, Blondie was one of our guest judges, which is awesome. So Blondie and Nick, who I believe Nick also has some work in here as well. Yeah, a vlogger's kit, it looks like. So we'll get to that here in a little bit. But first, this really cool Gorai build here with the exosuit. Another kit that I actually do have all built up and ready to review. So you guys will see this one reviewed actually very, very soon. Uh, this is a custom version which has a whole bunch of stuff added onto it. Uh, it looks like some of the werewolf parts and maybe some more. So it's not only like the Gorai. In terms of like the frame arms girl is basically the Gorai, uh, but the frame arms kit, the exosuit, is the go ride but with some added parts like i said i think it's from the werewolf and maybe some other stuff in there as well but there's like kind of just the two suits together oh uh, i guess not together together but side by side and then together uh, with all this stuff added on here so really really cool beautiful painting on this that looks really nice with that uh, just kind of gray color scheme and all these different shades of gray and shading and everything on there all the pre-shading and the painting on it looks fantastic very, very cool. And because I'm in the middle of painting this exact kit right now, it's cool to see. Not with the exosuit, but with the uh, Marutoi's No Seru. If you guys missed that work in progress video, you can check that out. I'm just in the midst of painting. Actually, the painting's all done. Just gonna work on starting detailing work on that, and that, that will be done pretty soon, actually. We got some more photos here of kind of, once again, the two suits like side by side, sharing all these different weapons and accessories. We just got a ton of different weapons here that are just utilized in a bunch of different ways for these different photos. And there you can see as the, uh, like I said, I think that's the werewolf uh, with all that extra. It's basically the go ride with a bunch of extra equipment and stuff added onto there. It's very cool. So really, really awesome build there. Love to see some love there to the frame arms girl and frame arms line, both. I really wish that Kotobukiya would, you know, keep up with the frame arms line as well. I know it's maybe not as, as popular as the other lines, but I love the frame arms kits and it would be cool to see some more frame arms kits and some more frame arms mooks as well. I think there's only really a couple of them that I know of. But here, of course, we've got some Sosai Shoujo Tan up next. So we're ditching the mecha and just going straight up Musume here for this custom build based off of the Maroka Yuki swim style, uh, but sort of like a kit bash here, as you can see, as it does feature like some of the parts of the school uniform. This one is modeled by Keichiro. Really interesting use of parts of the school uniform, the collar and the sleeves parts there. And like this skirt part also seems, oh no, that's, that's the original skirt part, but then mixed with the swimsuit body of Maroka Yuki there. And again, the painting on this is uh, fantastic. Here we got another one. This one is uh, modeled based off of the same kit, but just a kind of different mix of parts here. But again, kind of mixing the swimsuit and school uniform parts there sort of, or no, that's, yeah, well it is anyway. Uh, the body is the swimsuit parts of different kits. And anyway, just sort of kit bashing going on here. And the hair, it looks really nice. The, just the painting on the hair. It's really, really nicely done. 
Okay, uh, moving along here a little bit, the Arcanadia Lumetia. This one is modeled by Akinori Yoshimura, Jun Art Planning, as the nickname there. So this is uh, based off of the original white version, I would imagine, uh, and not the Lumetia Reacta, the dark, dark uh, black colored version. But it's definitely gone a little bit from like the pure white to this more uh, like shaded against like pre-shaded white. And it's it seems kind of a weird oxymoron to say, but it's like a dark white. Anyway, if that makes sense. It's not like super bright. Like the original kit has like this very bright kind of uh, very similar to like what we saw with the Matsurasu regalia here at the start. A kind of like bright white uh, theme overall. This one being shaded and having some like dark some black like kind of undertones in some of these parts there. There's a couple of like black accents. Definitely gives it like this much darker kind of look, even though it's still white. But if you guys get what I mean, it's kind of interesting. So there you can see, it looks like all the pre-shading was done on that and like a dark purple on that. So and then obviously painting the white on top of that's gonna give you a very different look. It's interesting. All right, so moving on from Kotobuki, I think so far everything we've seen in Kotobuki. So the first, as we're at the center of the MOOC now, we're getting to the first non Kotobuki kit, which is a, uh, Guzmao Company, Plamax, Guilty Princess here. So this is the Guilty Princess underwear body girl Ran. This one is modeled and described by Fritzko. So yeah, I'm sure we've seen a lot of work by Fritzko before on different uh, Mechamusume model mooks, modeling mooks before, but this one looks really nice. Obviously there's not a lot of like uh, custom modeling and painting to be done on anything other than just like the skin tone parts because of the design of the kit. But what we do have, as far as just like the swimsuit and like the, the painting here on like the leggings, the hair, uh, some of the weapons and accessories, all looks really nice. And then like the emphasis is obviously going to be on the skin tone. So we can see there is some of the uh, detail images here about like how the skin tone parts were painted and enhanced with some pigment and everything right there. So that looks cool. Then we've got a Cheeto Serum kit here again from Plamax. So we're moved on to Plamax now here for the next couple of kits anyway. This one is also by Kenichiro. It looks like a collaboration build at least maybe. It says Kenichiro and Renya also. So a really cool build here. I'm actually right now in the middle of in the middle of putting together my first ever Cheeto Serum kit. I've never built any of them until right now actually just this morning. I started working on one of them with a new release there out in the line. But I'm wondering your guys take on the line if you've ever built any of them, what you think about the kits in general, what are your thoughts are. Obviously, like I said, I'm in the middle of building my first one right now. I've built other uh, Plamax and Max Factory, uh, Good Smile Company, Mecha Musume, Musume style model kits before. So I, I think probably my thoughts so far is that it's gonna be very similar, but uh, just kind of the Cheeto Serum designs haven't really appealed to me quite as much as some of the other different uh, kind of similar style model kits. So that's why I haven't never built one before. I mean, this one looks beautiful, but uh, those of you guys who maybe have built one or two or more of them, and if you are fans of the line, maybe let me know what some of your thoughts are, if you have any recommendations maybe to any particular ones that you might recommend. This is kind of one of the main features of the kits is that they have like this kind of form where you can have them kind of uh, mounted like they're coming out of this like box kind of thing, this uh, hexagonal box like a storage box for them. It's kind of cool. It's an interesting gimmick to them. They have like, they have their very own, I've talked about this before uh, when talking about uh, reviewing different um, Good Smile Company Mechamusume kits, in particular like the Guilty Princess line, that I love that they do something different, right? I, I love that they don't just do like kind of their version of 30 Minute Sisters or their version of Megami Device. They do like a really different aesthetic style to the kits, which is nice. It gives you a little bit more variety, like this one here as well, the God's Order kits. So I believe now we have, just have the first two out and there's two more on the way, at least. Uh, those are really cool as well. I, uh, again, the first one I built and reviewed, this one is the second one, which I have in the queue, which I'll be building and reviewing in the near future. But uh, this one's the God Wing Celestial Demon Knight. The first one was really cool, very interesting. Again, I just love how interesting and unique uh, building a kit like this is just compared to kind of, I mean, I love the Megami device kits, the Frame Arms Girl kits and everything else, uh, the Sosa Shoujo Teian kits. That's what I love about these types of Musume, Mech Musume. This one's more like kind of fantasy Musume, but I just love the variety of uh, these kits is great. So really cool to have kind of everything all collected into this one MOOC as well. It's really nice. So really cool kits, definitely very unique style, uh, very different. So if you guys have not checked out the God's Order kits, definitely check them out. Uh, again, so far, there's only just like the light version and the dark version between the first two kits. 
The third and fourth kits are red and blue themed, so kind of each one has a certain like color theme and there's like an overall style as well. Where the first one was like a kind of eagle aesthetic on it, this one has an owl aesthetic on it, which kind of matches the fact that it's a dark color scheme. So here we've got 30 Minute Sisters, which I didn't think we were gonna see a much of a feature on, but this is uh, the Farfarina. Otar, Otar Oratorio form here from San Noji. The Farfarina definitely had a more kind of uh, fantasy style to the original kit with these kind of wings and lance and shield, uh, but it looks like in this case he basically ditched those parts and went for a much more kind of mechanical, kind of true, like traditional Mechamusume theme here with some of those 30 minutes missions option parts, which we can see a little bit better here on the next page. These big massive fuel tanks and these big parts up there on the back, these big thrusters and everything to give it a really cool style here. A much more, yeah, like the traditional kind of almost sort of Gundam Mechamusume, yeah, kind of look to this. So 30 minutes sisters with a very 30 minutes missions kind of uh, aesthetic to it. It makes sense. So that looks good. Very cool. And then we do have one more here from Bandai. It's the Noir kit, another one which I've got over there in the queue to build an interview for you guys. Soon, I know it's all coming soon, right? But uh, for this one, it looks like this is the uh, Sinduality kit here, of course, from the Figure Eyes standard line. So really nice modeled build here of Noir. We have a couple of work in progress photos there showing about like uh, how to remove some of the seam lines that we have on that kit. And it's a really cool style to it. While I've had very mixed, I would say ranging from mixed to poor uh, experience with like the girl model kits in the figure eyes standard line. Uh, this one definitely looks like one of the nicer ones for sure. So I'm looking forward to, to checking it out. Here's another really cool tip here about using masking tape to line up your details on the face. So if you are using a custom decals, like for example, if you did want to use these decals here on the back, sometimes if you've ever tried it, you know, uh, placing those decals on the just blank face plate is kind of difficult to get everything all lined up just right and using masking tape is a good way to do that because you can have your you can make straight lines basically with that a little bit more here about the other uh, sin duality model kit it's kind of interesting why they would really include this much of that i include i get that it's like maybe like a set and having some photos of like them together but it's kind of interesting that there's so many photos of just the the kit there by itself with a kind of focus on that all right so moving on here to the strong mercenary this is a blockers uh, fiore kit here and this is the custom build by nick so really love to see Nick's work always. And this one is, again, a part of the Vlockers uh, Fiore line, which I think is probably one of the lesser known lines. I feel like, especially here in the West, you don't really see a lot of people buying and building these kits. I think just because they're just kind of harder to get your hands on here in the West outside of Japan. And even in Japan, I mean, they're not sold uh, just because they're like uh, Volks kits. They're not sold everywhere like you can get Megami device kits, Kotobukiya's kits, Bandai's kits, even uh, Good Smile Company, Max Factory, and Plamax kits everywhere and even Awashima kits which we will see here up next but uh, the Volks kits not as common anyway so it's cool to see in here and like I said I always love to see Nick's work the painting and the colors and everything one thing that I love about Nick's work is just the uh, the custom painting and colors that he uses always really nice so yeah like i said this is from awashima this is a, a part of their vfg or variable fighters girl line this is a kit that i did actually build and review it's the macross 40th anniversary ranka lee uh, model kit here actually it's maybe not the 40th anniversary there's like i think a different version the 40th anniversary version i think is different from the original version but this is the first time at least in this MOOC so far that we've seen the actual like custom made cloth clothing i think that's custom made i don't oh, maybe it did include that i think that was one of the things that actually maybe was included with that kit now that i think about it if i remember anyway it's got actual cloth clothing here which you do see on mechanism make kits from time to time it's less common just because i think it's it's hard to make it look uh, realistic and convincing in that such a small scale uh, but this one actually looks pretty nice so is that obviously the theme with these kits is that uh, it's like a girl bashed with a macross model basically and so it's kind of like a two-in-one uh, with these you get both the models separately and then you can combine them in the batroid form the combination of the batroid form and in girlwalk mode she rides on it like that. So anyway, these kits are really nice. If you're a fan of Mechamusume style, and if you're a fan of Macross, then I highly recommend checking these kits out because they're really, really nice. Uh, they can be, you know, definitely a lot, it's a lot more to build because it's like two kits in one. So it's definitely a longer build if you're going to be picking one of these up and building it. 
and so they also can be a little bit more expensive because of that but again like i said it's two kits in one it's basically a fully transforming kit uh almost it doesn't transform into battery mode on its own if i remember correctly you can't just make the fighter into Batroid mode. The Batroid mode is only a combination of the two kits. But anyway, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. All right, and uh, Dark Advent here, the relaxed version of Sophia. This one is again by Rika. This was a cool kit, again, just because it was basically just kind of a reissue of the original kit, but with a very different style to it. I mean, I think there was maybe a few parts that were reused from the original kit, but not really that much. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if there was really that much of the original kit that was reused for this, honestly. It's pretty much an entirely new kit, which was awesome. Kind of really cool to see kind of a totally different uh, theme for this one, because the original kit was, you know, very kind of traditional. Mekamusume had all the armor and weapons and everything like this. So we have the same character, but now in just a completely different setting with the relaxed version. So it's very interesting, it's cool. Like I said, I like to see companies when they're making these kits doing something different. And so this was a good example of that. We actually have a new version of Ilania, I think it is. It's coming out in like an exercise version. That's coming with, rather than like this kind of like relax stuff, it has a kind of like exercise theme and comes with like some exercise equipment or something. So another kind of cool release coming out from the Dark Advent line in the near future. I believe that's coming out later this year. So here we go, we got a look at some different hairstyle parts that are custom made, I guess it looks like, here for this, and a little bit about the designing of that. Some more images here of the eye decals and more about the hair, custom hair parts here. It's a really cool custom hair parts there made for that. Kind of like the emphasis of this build. Again, it's, it's like the uh, Guilty Princess kit we saw before that doesn't have a whole lot of mecha aesthetic to it, or doesn't have a lot of mecha parts to it or like extra weapons, accessories, stuff like that. It's kind of where that build before was kind of focused on the skin. This one also has a lot of skin there, obviously, but to, like the focus of this build is on the hair in particular. So you can see a lot of attention paid to that. All right, then we've got the Asuka Plamax kit. We actually just took a look at this um, about a week ago. This is a really cool painted build here because it's painted in that kind of animation style uh, painting that you sometimes see. Uh, I've seen it a lot on different mecha model kits, much less so on kits like this though. So it's really interesting to see that painting style applied to a model kit like this. It's really cool to see. I've seen it like from time to time, but definitely much less often. It looks really, really good here on this Asuka kit. So this one being very fresh in the mind after, like I said, just re very recently uh, building and reviewing this kit. Haven't painted it yet, but this looks really good. So you can see the original kit compared to the painted version. It looks so much nicer. So pretty incredible work done here on that. It looks really, really nice. This one modeled and described by Ma Man, who I'm guessing this is Ma Man. I'm not familiar with Ma Man, I don't believe, as a modeler anyway. So we'll have to look into that. Anyway, here's the girls' plamo front line. So it looks like this is going to be a collection. I think these last uh, last few pages, maybe not, there's going to be something a little bit more there towards the end, but it's going to be a few pages here of just some basically new and recent releases, recent or upcoming releases, actually. None of these are out yet. Like I said, the new line from Kotobukiya, Megalomaria, the first release is just released, uh, but all the rest of these, I believe, are not out yet. So new Megami device, frame arms, girl kits, coming out, Arcanadia kits on the way, so says Shoujo Teian kits, so just kind of a preview of some kits that are coming soon here, and the new uh, Vlockers kit there, kind of Zoid's kind of theme to that one, definitely. Some more Guilty Princess, Cheeto Serum kits there, also Plamax, the uh, Plamax Ray kit that's on the way as well. New kits on the way from Bandai in the Figure Eyes Standard and uh, 30 Minute Sisters. Here's the kit I was talking about, the Lanya kit, the exercise Lanya kits, new Aoshima kits there on the way in the VFG line. And then up next, we've got a build guide here. So this is, again, very interesting because this is the exact kit that I'm in the process of painting right now. This is the white version of the Gorai Kai. So we're gonna have an introduction to some different tools that you can use and then a step-by-step -step process of how to do some uh, of the kind of custom modeling on this, basically removing some of the seam lines on the skin tone parts, which is a little bit challenging just because of those parts being in ABS. Uh, it's so it's a little bit more of a trick to it, but it comes out looking very nice in the end. I think a lot of that's just due to how well Kotobuki's parts are made, that the fit on those is so good that you can basically get rid of the seam lines pretty easily. In most cases, I should say, and for most kits, <laughs> not, not always necessarily. But so there's just a bit about removing seam lines, 
And then up next here looks just like a bit about just kind of further work on a lot of different steps here for removing the seam line on the side of the torso. You can see it kind of before and after. I'm not sure how well you guys can see it on camera there, but uh, with that seam line on the side of the torso parts removed, a little bit of that. And then a little bit of a guide here about how to take proper photos of the kits as well. So it's just kind of showing you uh, like, for example, the zoom, uh, 2x zoom, uh, 0.5, which would be kind of zoomed out, a little bit fisheye effect there, and 1x, just kind of the difference in how the photo is going to look. So yeah, this is something that um, I, I don't do all the time, but it's certainly something that you can do, and it's a good way to photograph, especially small scale stuff like this, is actually um, zoom in and just like step back. So be a little bit farther away, but zoomed in, it will eliminate some of the... Uh, well, kind of uh, warping, that's not the right word for it, but anyway, the image will be less uh, warped compared to if you're like really close in with your camera on something really small like that, actually being further back and zoomed in is a good way to get everything in there. And then this one, just showing how the different f-stop is going to alter the photo, so at different uh, shutter speeds there. And so anyway, again, some nice uh, photography tips here for you. If you're primarily using your phone, you may not have uh, these controls built in. It kind of depends if you're using iPhone or Android or whatever kind of phone you're using. Uh, you don't always have manual control of your phone. That said, there's different apps that you can use. So like I have an iPhone and just in the just kind of standard photo app, you don't have control of the, you don't have manual control of the camera, but I do have an app uh, which does give me manual control and it's very helpful, uh, certainly for taking uh, better photos. I'm still not like, I still don't feel like I'm really, really good at taking photos with my phone, but you can take really good photos with your phone and having manual control uh, definitely helps. If you have a phone that doesn't give you manual control, I would highly recommend getting an app, even if you have to pay a few dollars for it. It just makes it so much easier to take some nice photos of your kits if you have manual control of your phone's camera. All right, so last part here, it looks like. I think this is just some artwork, or maybe not the last uh, quite yet. This one is Neo's Sandbox. A Neo, uh, not a designer I'm familiar with, but interesting style there. Certainly a, an aesthetic that we haven't really seen in a whole lot of Mekumusume like model kits. We've not really had much in the way of thick model kits in the world of Mekumusume model kits at all, and it's something that I'm hoping that some company, I don't know whether it's going to be Kodobuki or whatever, will explore a little bit further in uh, future releases. Hopefully we'll see something a little bit more like that in the future. But anyway, Megami Device Creators Labo over here. This one is a design by Nidhi2D, obviously a designer that we're much more familiar with. Cool new design here from Nidhi2D for this particular one. I don't know if this is something that's going to be uh, serialized into a model kit or not, but hopefully it looks cool. That'd be nice. And this would be the last part here. It looks like this is going to be a collection of maybe um, just some other nice works. I don't know if it's something that uh, the modelers themselves submitted to be included in this MOOC, or it's just something that uh, was uh, curated by the staff of uh, this MOOC, of staff of Hobby Japan, if they just curated these, but it's got a bunch of different images from some different modelers. A lot of these I know I've seen around on Twitter actually, but you can see it does have their handles here at the bottom. So if there's one you like, oh, I really wanted to see some more of that, you could find this is number 47 there, for example, find 47. You can uh, just search their handle. They're, most of these models are probably on Twitter. So we got some more of that here on the next page where you can see all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, it's cool to see a lot of familiar builds on here. A lot of really a lot of really great and fantastic stuff. So like the stuff that we've seen, the builds that we've seen in here have all been like really great and these are all like professional level builds. But a lot of these I know are, are just as good, definitely, uh, just from ones that I'm familiar with. And there's a lot in here that could have just as easily been featured as like some of the main features in this book. But you know, they can't, this book can't be 300, 400 pages long. I would have been very happy with it if it would have been. And I would certainly be looking forward to a volume two, but that's it here for volume one. So what'd you guys think? A lot of really great stuff in here. This was a book that I was particularly looking forward to and it definitely did not disappoint. So there's a lot of really great stuff in there. Love to see, you know, kind of all the different model kit lines getting featured in there. Again, it would be cool to see some more in the future also to feature some of the like Chinese brands, like I said, Nuke Matrix, ATK Girls, some of those in here as well. I think they're just not as popular in Japan as the Japanese brand ones. A little bit maybe kind of nationalism in there, I'm not sure, but in my opinion, Kodobukiya is still at the top of the game when it comes to Mekumisume model kits, so it makes sense that they're kind of like the main feature. 
I think they kind of did it first, did it best, and they're still doing it the best. And so I'm anxious to know your guys' thoughts though. What are what were some of your favorite builds here? Were there some model kit lines that maybe you had never heard of before? Like I said, like the Vlockers line or the God's Order line would be another one that uh, maybe were a little bit under the radar for some of you guys. If so, let me know in the comment section. If you guys would also like to leave a like while you're here, that'd be greatly appreciated. If you guys wanna check out some of these kits for yourself, check the link in the video description. Got a bunch of these kits and more and paints, tools, and supplies, everything else that you guys might need at the USA Gundam store. The link will be down in the video description below, so check that out. If you guys would also like to make sure that you're subscribed while you're here, like I said, I tried to do these MOOC reviews for you guys at least once a week, so you like, if you like this type of video, and then obviously if you like other different uh, reviews, tutorials, work in progress, and all that good stuff, you guys can just make sure that you're subscribed and stick around. So that's it for today, guys. We'll see you in the next video.